Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, yesterday I posted a video regarding the game A Slower Speed of Light, MIT Games Lab's exploration of uh, relativistic effects at walking speed. Now, um, many people immediately asked me, what would it take to put a spacecraft up to the speed of light in Kerbal Space Program? Well, um, having tackled the problem of deorbiting a moon, it's simply more mathematics to ask the question of what it takes to get a rocket up to the speed of light in Kerbal Space Program. And so, using standard parts, I have built a rocket which is almost all aero spikes with just a little bit of fuel and of course enabled the cheats to allow me uh, zero fuel use. This thing accelerates at about 153 meters per second squared and of course once we get up a little we can go into full time acceleration mode which will quadruple that for our wall clock behavior that'll bring it up to almost 600 meters per second per second. Now I'm sure some of you will be bringing out your calculators to figure out how long that will take to accelerate to the speed of light and then you will find out by the end of the video. But the more interesting question is, if we were to be good citizens and do this properly with fuel tanks and dropping them and everything, how much would it take to put build a spacecraft using stock parts that could go up to the speed of light given enough patience? Well, I'm sure you all know the rocket equation by now. This is where you calculate the resultant velocity by taking the logarithm of the ratio between your initial mass and your final mass, and then you multiply that by the specific impulse of your engine and the acceleration due to gravity. And that gives you the delta V for the rocket if you know these parameters. But we want to turn things around. We want to compute the size of the rocket based upon the delta V requirements. So we need to invert this equation and what turns out is that we need to take the final velocity and divide it by the exhaust velocity. And the exhaust velocity is basically specific impulse multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is of course 9.81. Now, once you have this ratio, you take the magic number E, which is the natural logarithm base, and raise it to that power. So this is an exponential function, which means that as the final velocity grows, the fuel required grows exponentially. So to give you a quick example using reasonable numbers, say we want to build a, a rocket using the nuclear thruster, which has 10 kilometers per second of delta V, what we do is we take 10,000, we divide that by 800 for the specific impulse of the nuclear rocket, then we divide that by 9.81 and we get a number of uh, 1.274, right? Now we raise E to that power. Now E is a magical number that comes out of mathematics. It's kind of like pi and its value is roughly 2.718. But a lot of calculators will, of course, come with an E value built in because it's really important. So if we raise it to that power, we get uh, a ratio of about 3.56. That means that our initial rocket has to be 3.56 times heavier than the empty rocket if we're going to get 10 kilometers per second out of it. Now, if we want to go up to the speed of light, well, the speed of light is uh, roughly 300,000 kilometers per second, and that is quite a large value. So if we again use the nuclear rocket, which uh, our ISP of 800, and uh, we divide the speed of light, which is 299,792, 458 meters per second, then uh, we come up with uh, e to the power 38,199.85. So if we just plug that into a calculator, we get infinity. Now it's not really infinity. What's happening is the calculator is trying to represent it using standard floating point numbers and it's just throwing its arms up because the number is so big. It is stupendously big. I don't think people realize just how big this value is, but most of us have been trained to work in terms of base 10. Uh, some of us are pretty good at base 16, but uh, base 10 I think is the dominant number base in this uh, world. So what we want to do is represent this as something times 10 to the power big number. And there's actually a way to do that without resorting to a calculator and having its head explode with the really big numbers. What we can do is divide our exponent by the logarithm, the natural logarithm of 10. And that gives us a number of 
10 to the power 16,590. Now that is a really big number. It's not quite as big as a Googleplex, which you might have heard of, but it's certainly bigger than a Google. And most models of the universe put the number of particles in the universe at less than about 10 to 100. So this is stupendously more than this number. Even the most promiscuous multiverse theories would have a hard t uh, time coming up with this number of uh, particles or entities in the entire multiverse. If we took our entire universe and converted it into a giant computer able to run Kerbal Space Program, then we cheated and created a part in that which had a fuel tank which had the mass of the entire universe. There would not be enough bits and bytes to store the craft model for this thing. This is what exponentials do for you. Now, the best way to reduce this is to reduce that, uh, that power value. So, what happens if we take the specific impulse and we increase it from 800 to 8,000? Well, that reduces our number by a stupendous value. It goes to, it is now merely 10 to the power 1,659. Still stupendously big and not useful. Okay, what happens if it becomes and has an ISP of 80,000? Well, then we're uh, 8 times 10 to the 165. So, well, at that point, that crazy universe hack that I talked about might actually work. But what about if we raise the ISP to 800,000? That's a thousand times what it is in the original game. Well, at that point the mass ratio between the initial mass and the final mass becomes 3.9 times 10 to the 16. And at that point, assuming your final spacecraft uh, mass is only a few tons, well, at that point, then you're getting into the mass of planetary size bodies. Now, you still need a supercomputer to store this thing because the craft file is going to be measured in petabytes, but it's not beyond what we can imagine with today's technology. And to be fair, we'd probably have to mod not only the specific impulse, but the thrust, because if we keep the stock thrust, then uh, because of the improved fuel consumption, it would take roughly seven quadrillion years to uh, burn up all that fuel and reach that velocity. You know, at that point, you're starting to worry about the heat death of the universe. So let's bring the specific impulse up one more notch to 8 million. At that point, the mass ratio hits 45.6. And that is well within the ranges we expect for relatively ordinary rockets and Kerbal Space Program. At that point, the exhaust velocity is approaching a quarter of the speed of light. Now, if we were to reach into the realms of science fiction and pull up some scientific process that could produce these kind of exhaust velocities, we could take a look at a hydrogen fusion into helium. Now, in hydrogen fusion to helium, which happens inside the, uh, the center of the sun, and it's a little more complicated than that because they have various pathways that require intermediate nuclei. Now, the, sim the simplest manner, converting hydrogen to helium converts about 7% of the mass of the hydrogen into energy. And 93% uh, is left in the helium atom. And if you work that out, it means the, the velocity, if that could all be converted into velocity in the helium atoms, they would be moving at about 100,000 kilometers per second, which is about a third of the speed of light. So if there were some mechanism that could, in fact, take those hydrogen atoms and fuse them into helium and, s and make sure all the energy went in and none of the energy was lost through neutrinos or other particles that we couldn't constrain or corral, then we would get a rocket of about the efficiency required to travel to, you know, the speed of light, or at least near to the speed of light. Now, Kerbal Space Program doesn't implement any special restrictions on relativity. The speed of light is not the maximum speed limit, and you don't have to deal with things like mass increases as you approach the speed of light. So, given enough time, you can definitely get up there. And so we come back to our original spacecraft. Now, as we passed about 3,000 uh, kilometers per second, the autopilot started to do some weird things, and we actually started to pick up some odd oscillations. The Kraken may well not have been slain. In fact, maybe hiding out in corners of the physics system seldom traveled by players. 
but after leaving it running for the better part of the day, my spacecraft is heading up to almost 10% of the speed of light, wobbling all the way. If we were in fact able to keep it straight, it would take approximately 22 days of non-stop acceleration at this rate to hit the speed of light. And that is of course assuming that the Kraken doesn't stomp on it before it finally gets there. Honestly, if you really want to travel at the speed of light in this game, you have to edit the save file or perhaps use some more powerful mod. Just make sure you also think about a way to slow down before landing. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.